Stumbling on the racetrack is something no one can avoid, but getting back up after a fall is what truly shows the metal of a giant. Speaking of this, we must mention SpaceX, a company that stands out from the rest of the space industry when they've shown impressive resilience and growth following the failure of the second stage of the Falcon 9 rocket. Moreover, recently, what their workhorse rocket even just did in Florida shocked NASA. How did Elon react? All will be revealed in today's episode of Alpha Tech. And before getting into the main contact, we want to tell you, first of all, thanks for supporting our channel these last three years. We've right now got 86,000 subscribers and are getting very close to the 100,000 mark. To achieve this, we do need your help. So please hit that subscribe button now, and that way you will never miss out on any of our exciting daily human non-AI generated content. And it also gives us the motivation to continue creating these videos for you to watch every day. All right, let's continue. It's been a month since the launch issue of Falcon 9, which broke its streak of 325 successful flights. SpaceX has bounced back with a series of impressive launches. Just last week, SpaceX hit several milestones. The Falcon 9 launch August 7th marked the company's 80th mission this year. We're just halfway through the year. Okay, maybe a little bit more, but still, even though the company's behind its target launch rate, it's halfway towards the goal of hitting 148 rocket launches. The current launch average interval for Falcon 9 is 2.82 days. If SpaceX wants to meet or come close to its target of 148, they'll need to reduce the interval to 2.47 days or even lower to get higher efficiency. Although the repeated pauses in launches due to the second stage issue have slowed SpaceX down a bit, the company's ability to make up for lost time is clearly evident. With Falcon 9's 75th launch of the year, it's completed its 25th flight from Vandenberg Space Force Base. Compared to 2023, SpaceX launched 28 rockets from SLC-4E over the entire year. August 2nd, SpaceX launched the Starlink Group 10-6 mission from NASA's LC-39A launch pad. This was SpaceX's 50th mission from the East Coast, including both LC-39A and SLC-40, and the 15th launch from this historic pad. Everything seemed to be going smoothly, but an unexplained glitch has happened. On August 11th, the anticipation was high for the Falcon 9 to carry 23 Starlink satellites up into orbit, representing another leap forward for the rising space company founded by Elon Musk. Originally, the liftoff was set for 10.59 a.m. Eastern, and all systems seemed to go as spectators gathered to witness the launch. But as is often the case with space launches, things can change at the last minute. 46 seconds before the scheduled liftoff, the countdown suddenly stopped, sending waves of confusion through the crowd and the SpaceX team. The launch director indicated via the live stream, Launch abort is running. Leaving many to wonder what had gone wrong. Following the unexpected pause, SpaceX took to social media to announce today's Falcon 9 of the Starlink was paused at T-46 seconds. Vehicle and payload are in good health and teams are resettling for a launch attempt on Monday, August 12th. However, this news doesn't completely dampen the excitement. Instead, it's just another thing on a long list of factors that space enthusiasts have to face while waiting for rocket launch events. With launches often getting scrubbed to weather, technical issues, or routine checks, enthusiasts quickly shift their focus to the next launch opportunity. Observers are reminded of how patience and adaptability have become deeply ingrained in those involved in space exploration. SpaceX's proactive approach and regular updates have helped maintain public interest and engagement. The countdown to the next launch attempt is set for 6.37 a.m. August 12th, with backup windows extending throughout the day. The transparency here is something we all need to appreciate, as SpaceX consistently keeps us all informed and ready to deliver moments of excitement, even if there is sometimes cause for impatience, especially compared to companies like Boeing or even NASA, which tend to be more secretive about issues with Starliner. After all, the Falcon 9's adaptability and the company's tendency to overcome challenges are helping shape the future of space missions. The waiting game continues, along with the extreme excitement of anticipating what SpaceX is going to do next. And they did not disappoint. Even though SpaceX did have one mission scrubbed, on that same day, Falcon 9 set a new record. During the launch on the night of August 11th, Falcon 9 successfully deployed two satellites that'll provide broadband coverage in the Arctic region. According to SpaceX's mission description, this marched the 22nd launch and landing of this particular booster. This tied the company's rocket reuse record, which was set last June during the SpaceX Starlink Internet satellite launch. The booster, listed as B-1061, will now be brought to land, checked over, and refurbished for its 23rd flight. 
The booster previously launched Crew-1, Crew-2, SXM-8, CRS-23, IXPE, Transporter-4-5, Global Star FM-15, ISI Aero C-3, Korea-425, Maxar-1, and 10 Starlink missions. It's tied with B-1062, which launched and landed for the 22nd time back in June. Before Sunday's mission, B-1061's most recent flight happened on June 8th when it deployed a batch of Starlink satellites. While its first launch took place in November 2020, where it sent SpaceX's Crew-1 astronauts to the ISS and the Crew Dragon spacecraft's first operational mission. B-1061 has another claim to fame for becoming the first booster to launch all of SpaceX's different launch sites and returning to all of its operational drone ships and landing zones, except the rarely used LZ-2 at Cape Canaveral in Florida. This is SpaceX's first stage rocket booster reuse system, which has contributed to several successful missions, including the deployment of communications satellites and resupply missions to the International Space Station. After launch, the booster is expected to land on SpaceX's drone ship stationed off the coast of Florida, a maneuver that many admire as part of the company's innovative approach to reusability. But what really draws attention to the Falcon 9 missions is their impact on technology and, more broadly, on our daily lives. Starlink satellites are paving the way for improved internet access, especially in rural and remote areas, transforming the way people communicate and access information. So far, Starlink is now available in 100 countries, Elon shared. However, in reality, as of the time we made this video, that number is even higher. The rise of Starlink as a legitimate internet service provider has been impressive. Starlink started its first public beta of the service in October 2020, less than four years ago. As of early March this year, it included over 6,000 mass-produced small satellites in LEO, communicating with designated ground transceivers. Nearly 12,000 satellites are planned for deployment, with a potential to expand to 34,000 later. SpaceX announced surpassing a million subscribers in December 2022, 2 million in September 2023, and 3 million in May of this year. While Starlink has drawn a significant amount of criticism due to a polarizing nature of Elon, the service has proven its invaluable worth globally. The system played a crucial role in the war in Ukraine, enabling Ukrainian forces to maintain communication despite Russia's efforts to cut off the country's internet. Starlink's also been used in emergency situations, like in Brazil, where it was deployed after flood damage. Moreover, the Starlink network is now being used for military applications under the name Star Shield. Starshield is the militarized version of SpaceX's Starlink satellite internet services, with enhanced encryption and other security features. Unlike Starlink that's a commercial service, Starshield satellites will be owned and controlled by the U.S. government. This development has driven competitors to frantically keep up with SpaceX's Starlink, including China. Recently, China made a significant advancement in its efforts to create a competitor to SpaceX's Starlink by launching the first of 14,000 satellites that it hopes will provide broadband internet service from space. This constellation named Thousand Sails, hailed by domestic media as China's answer to SpaceX's Starlink, aims to join a number of large-scale space projects already planned or operational by broadband satellite internet providers in various countries countries. Thousand Sales is one of three major constellations planned by China, which could see the country's companies launch nearly 40,000 satellites into LEO, defined as no more than 1,200 miles above Earth in the coming years. The so-called mega constellation refers to a network of hundreds of thousands of satellites orbiting in space. The launch comes as China boosts its commercial space sector as part of Beijing's broader effort to solidify its position as a dominant space power. The nation's made significant strides in its ambitious national space program, with goals to send astronauts to the moon by 2030 while launching satellites linked to the military for positioning, communication, and surveillance. Experts say that controlling LEO broadband satellite constellations could benefit China by allowing its companies to provide services domestically and globally, while also bolstering Beijing's diplomatic influence, control over data flows, and national security. However, that's only one side of the story from SpaceX's perspective. We also have to consider the current reality. It's undeniable that China's projects lagged far beyond the competition. Starlink's up and running in many places. I'm using it right now, actually. Besides, the Kuiper project is expected to enter beta testing later this year, collaborating with seven countries in South America to provide service. Meanwhile, China's project is expected to be only at about 4% operational by next year. At this pace, assuming an additional 4% every four months, China's system reaches orbit around 2033. It might secure a market from local patriots, and anyone can force it to accept the service. But given China's notorious reputation for quality, one has to wonder how long after the satellites are 
are launched will it take for the system to actually work? That's all for today's episode. Thanks for watching and see you next time.